Welcome to episode 127 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I'm your host, Dave Ginsburg, and my co-host, Warren Sklarz. Here, how are you doing, Warren? I'm doing good. I'm, uh, yeah, it's all good. And also with us, I figured I'd continue on with a continuation of Mac to the Future Go. We have Mr. Guy Searle back on the show. Hello, Guy. Welcome. Hello, David and Warren. How are you? It seems like it wasn't even 24 hours ago that we were all together talking. Yes, it was. Yeah. We might as well just like not not even stop the broadcast and just, <laughs> <laughs> just, just right. we all just go to bed, you know, eat some breakfast, yeah. look in every once in a while, see if the other people are here. And yeah, I get okay. it. Just fix it in post, fix it in editing, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll put a pretty big recording. Um, so uh, I we are here because we want to talk a little bit about iOS, of course. But uh, one of our big topics going to be today is uh, installing iOS apps on an M1 Mac. And you two both have them. And we want to uh, talk a little bit about it and how it how it would be something that you might want to do or may not want to do. Uh, we've got a lot of news. Beta, of course, is uh, out, another new version, and some tips and all kinds of fun stuff like we always do. So let's uh, let's just go ahead and uh, jump into everything here. And uh, first story that caught my eye was uh, a lot of these stories are on Mac Rumors this, uh, this week. Um, Apple could be forced to include a, a charger with every iPhone sold in Brazil. A- Apple will be required to include a power adapter with every iPhone sold in Sao Paulo, Brazil. The state's Consumer Privacy uh, Protection Agency has declared... And uh, the public agency uh, ProCon SP contact Apple in, a- in October asking the company to explain why, why, why are you not no longer including of charging accessories with your new iPhones? And of course, the whole environment thing they said, but then I guess Apple had to give in because the government said no. And what did you guys think? Uh, Guy, what did you think? Well, you know, that's, that, I mean, that that's pretty standard across the board. You know, everybody that was getting yeah. all upset because Apple was, was doing something that other people were unhappy about because China said you have to do that in our country. You know, right. whatever country it is you're doing business in, I know you have to obey the rules of, of that country. It's a, it's a shock, but that's yeah. kind of how it works. You either do that or you don't do business in that country. Right. So, I mean, I think France did the same thing. I, if I remember correctly, we talked about that it's previously. France. The headphones. They did France. it with the headphones. Oh, they did it with the headphones, right? Not a plug. Yeah. So you have to have, head, you have, to have ear- earphones with that. And, and, France, and, the, but, and the story with Brazil is the, the law states that you can't sell a product where you can't fully, where it doesn't function fully. And that's how, it, how the law right. was written. So basically they're saying since you're not including a charger, you're selling something that's not full that's fundamentally not functional so it's a that's the law and then they also called apple out saying that the environmental impact of including the charger would have been yep. very minimal so Absolutely. and i i don't not agree with them you know uh, I, you know it's not a bad law it's actually no. a good law yeah and uh, i think you know i i think apple is not completely in the right by not to including it so absolutely so yep uh i would not be surprised other countries start following suit if they so so feel it's uh important to be there but uh i was fine with it you all of us have drawers full of those adapters so i don't think i'm oh, too, yeah. too overly concerned so moving on let's go I, again I, i'm actually go. i'm actually looking along the lines of of trying to consolidate get like a, a a charger that has multiple ports. Yep. So I have to carry so many of them around. Yeah. I have so, a bunch you know, I've got, I've got a, a standard uh, USB charger that has four USB ports on it, regular, you know, USB yep. two ports. And I just get USB to USB C or USB to lightning, whatever, whatever kind of cables and, right. and uh, connectors that I need in order to charge whatever devices I have on the road. Yep, and I don't worry about Apple's charge. No, I don't think you've been on the road for quite a while, so. <laughs> no, I have not, and believe me, it is it is a it is a, is. a, a bit of a yes, consternation at the moment. I, 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 see, drive, I, I see videos of him on the road way too often. Yeah, too often. <laughs> well, but, uh, I don't think I don't think guys' daily drive quite counts because you know <laughs> driving is job one. It is. All right, moving on. Mac rumors again. uh, This is a Google Authenticator iOS app has gained new export accounts option. 
Google has updated its two-factor authentication app uh, from uh, for iOS with a new account transfer feature that makes it much easier to transfer two-factor authentication codes to a new iPhone. Uh, two-factor authentication adds, of course, an extra secure layer of security for your online accounts and requiring and randomly generate a six-digit code every time you inter- and add the password. Um, and it was quite of an evolved process when you had to transfer accounts to a new iPhone, especially uh, uh, Warren and I just transferred. But... Thankfully, it's no longer the case. So um, I I don't know I don't necessarily use Google Authenticator. I have to I have to use uh, Microsoft Authenticator for work, but I you also sure. I also can use it for that as uh, for personal uh, my personal account as well. Warren, where do you uh, do you do you use Authenticator app? I use Microsoft like you do. Uh, our, yeah. My work uses that, and uh, yep, it works fine. I've tried them. I think I've tried it because. Um, yeah, me too. Uh, actually, well. Google, I have two factor. I turned on two factor authentication on Google, yeah, um, and and it doesn't see it doesn't use the authenticator. It prompt it does a little, um, you know, it gives you a notification on the phone, and you have to say, "Was this you?" And you say yes. Google, it, you know, for for all the security, you know, for all the the security problems that people claim them, they they like they'll ask you. 12 times yeah. if you logged into Google. Are yeah. you sure it was you? you yeah. Did you a prompt on my phone? Was this you? And then like 10 minutes later at four o'clock AM, somebody logged. Yes, it was me. That was me. Yeah. I was up early. What do you want from me? <laughs> Jeez. Guy, do, you, do you use a authenticator app that uh, keeps your account? No, I, you know, I only change phones every couple of years. So usually what I do is, is I've, you know, I got all my passwords in, in, a password manager. So I just, I just put them in manually if they're not already in iCloud and I don't worry about it. Okay. Well, you, you could also use it to protect your accounts too. I could, <laughs> I could, but you know, um, it's Google. They'll forgive me. They will. Yeah. Um, Next story again. Mac rumors. I've been. I was on a roll uh, this week. Uh, I think it's had some good stories. Uh, multiple iPhone 12 users reporting sudden drops in 5G and LTE cellular coverage since Apple launched the iPhone 12 in October. An increasing number of users of the new smartphone have been reporting persistent drops in cellular coverage. Multiple reports of the drop to the 5G and LTE connectivity have been appearing on Reddit and uh, Apple support forums, as well as on the Mac rumors forums. But uh, many people just suffering issues when walking or in transit and some seeing the same problem when stationary. So I guess I haven't seen it. So I, I get the, like when I'm at home here, I'm on 5g, I get about three, two to three bars and yeah, you know, my speeds have been pretty good. Actually on 5g, it's uh, about 70 or 80 megabit speeds. Um, Warren, uh, have you ever seen any problems with the 5g with your, your iPhone 12 pro max? Probably, but I, you know, it's, 2020 i expect my cell phone to drop out all, usually mostly all the time so yeah and explode um, yeah i'm not <laughs> it, it'll, it will never shock me if if i lose signal or calls i i, I prefer not to call anybody anymore because <laughs> oh, a they'll never hear me because of whatever the, the reception b will drop it's just you know i don't trust the phone on on, on a cell phone to, to actually well, talk to how people. are you going to find out about all those those great offers on your car warranty that that's all I, I that every every day i get about four of them yeah. i like to speak to the vehicle owner well for the vehicle <laughs> owner yeah we, we for, for your extended warranty <laughs> <laughs> so I, I i use a rickshaw it's it's a self-propelled rickshaw there must be some kind of major um like financial financial uh, uh advantage to be uh to sell these warranties uh, it's it's like they don't sell anything else. Just these uh, uh, extended car warranties, and it's all crap. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, I'm I'm getting it on the the, the secondary phone I have because I have a you know number I don't even you know, that's just a secondary number, and then you get those yeah. like like daily. Yeah, and, uh, and like they so, know they know exactly what kind of car you have, and they know exactly when your warranty is oh, going to run out. Yeah, you know, the exact I mean, car I, I haven't owned a, in three years, four yeah, years. I had a 2009. Uh, Ford Flex that had been out of warranty by the time I sold it about five years, and, and they yeah, still want to sell you those end. calls. Yeah, this yeah. said, "Well, your factory warranty is about to expire." I said, "Well, you're three to four to five years too late on that." So, and I don't you know, know how we got that. to that topic, but uh, yeah, uh, did you have any thoughts about five G? Uh, 
guy, I know you're not, you're not uh, experienced since you have the SE. So yeah, I'm, well, I'm on the SE too. Um, honestly, the, you know, I mean, 5g is just really, it's, it's just really starting to roll out. So new, the fact right. that Apple and Google and all these companies don't quite have their act together as far as picking up these signals in a consistent way and that carriers don't have their act together and making sure that signal gets out, uh, to, to sit there and say, well, it's Apple's fault or it's Google's fault or it's the carrier's fault. I think it's kind of premature that, yeah. that, you know, un unless you are sitting there with a, an O-scope or some other kind of device that's like yeah. looking directly at the signal and connected to the phone at the same time, it's like, you know, don't, don't sit there and say, well, it's Apple's fault or, or it's, it's this company's fault or that company's fault. They yeah. don't know, you know, it's, it's all brand new. It's still Talk too to new. me in a year and a half to two years See once where we're at. 5G is out there a little bit more, and Agreed. you know, and it's more of a it's it's more of a consistent thing than than just what it is right now. Yep. Uh, next story: Mac rumors again. Uh, iOS 14.2 quietly adds FaceTime 1080p support to the iPhone 8 and later models. Back in early November, Apple released 14.2, of course, and uh, announced with a slew of new features for iPhones. But one thing it didn't mention was the apparent addition of support for the 1080p FaceTime calls uh, on an iPhone 8 and later. This little-known fact was discovered by a Mac magazine, uh, uh, which uh, found that Apple quietly had updated the specs. And interesting that it, it wasn't there, because you can look up the 8 Plus uh, as for specs, and it actually shows it, uh, 1080p over Wi-Fi. Uh, and the comparison tool, if you compare it to the, uh, uh, this, this article has a picture of the eight plus the six S and the 12. And then of course the six plus S doesn't have it, but, uh, it's very clear that they had this. I didn't even know this. And, uh, I don't do a lot of FaceTime calling a guy would, would, what did you think? Uh, 1080 P's that make a difference uh, I actually to you? just had a FaceTime FaceTime call last night. I had a, um, okay. neighbor call me for tech support for two and a half hours. That's always fun. <laughs> you, you're, and, you, um, you're dedicated. Uh, well, yeah, I'm, well, I'm, I, I like to help. I, I'm a giver. I like to help people. We do, we all do. So, yeah. Um, if, frankly, you're looking at, at a, a, a small little subsection of the screen and it's typically yep. going over, you know, LTE or something like that. So you, you're not going to have the greatest signal anyway, and you're, you're dropping frames and all the rest of that. So the fact that each individual frame that isn't dropped is 1080p, you know, okay. Hooray. Wonderful. <laughs> the fact that Apple was already advertising it, but not giving it to you, I think is, is significant. And that's, yeah. that is certainly something worth, worth talking about. You know, I mean, don't, don't make promises that you aren't prepared to keep Apple. Right. Mm-hmm. Any uh, thoughts, Warren, on this? 99% uh, of the people I FaceTime with, I don't need to see any clearer than I usually do. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, no, no. Could yeah. you move back? Just I just don't need to see the zit on your lip. Uh, look, oh, look, yeah. look at that. It's, it's usually my mom who's like, you know, <laughs> trying right. to position it. I'm like. Yeah. All you can see is like the top of her forehead and up. Pretty yeah. much. So now yeah. I can see it in, in, in HD. Wow. Glorious HD. <laughs> Yep. Um, moving on, Mac rumors again. Uh, a couple days ago, Mac Safe Duo charger for iPhone 12 and Apple Watch is now available for purchase. And they began selling that today alongside with the new iPhone 12 models back in October, but it wasn't out and released yet. But priced at 129 bucks, the Mag Safe yeah. Duo offers a Mag Safe charging puck for the iPhone 12, 12 Pro, 12 Pro Max, and 12 Mini, along with the Apple Watch charger. Though the accessory was announced in October, it was listed as coming soon. It wasn't clear what took, what, when it took launching, and now it's out. Um, the unique thing about it is it has a fo foldable design, easy for portability, easy to carry around, but I don't see it needing it, it uh, to be spending that kind of money for a charger when you can get so much, much less charger. It does come with the USB-C to lightning cable, but it does not come with a charging puck, so you, then you have to buy that too. So... <laughs> um, it is not able to charge um, a iPhone 12 model at a full 15 watts support by the standalone MagSafe charger. Instead, it's able to uh, charge at the maximum 14 watts when paired with the appropriate charger. So uh, this thing is way overpriced. I, I never would think thought. But, you know, then again, um, there was another article that Mac Rumors, I was just watching their video a little while ago, um, that uh, I also bought that $79 round disc Apple Watch charger that flips up and 
And I, I, I know th- thought to myself, yeah, I was crazy too spending 80 bucks for that thing. But mm. I actually like that a little, the disc charger with the flip up that, uh, uh, the, the charges my watch because it's on my bed on my nightstand and uh, it work, looks uh, works really well. But this, eh, I think this is way overpriced. What do you think, guy? I've got this. This it's it's like these two pieces of metal that kind of come together and has a little cutout for the uh, for the watch charger. Mm-hmm. And I don't have a phone, of course. That or I don't know. Does the SE have Qi charging? Mm-hmm. I don't think okay. so. So you know, and then I, I then I have a. Um, uh, lightning cable and it's got yeah. a little, it's got a little tiny shelf that you can put your phone onto. So I just connect the lightning cable. And when I'm done at the end of the day, I take the two pieces of metal apart. It folds flat and I'm on my way. There you go. And I, I think it was, I think it was like 12 bucks. And I have an, I, I home clock uh, with the speaker built in and the charger, the stand, I just put mm-hmm. my iPhone on and it. That's Qi charging and it works. Although I had to get the case. I originally bought it was a, it was a, and one of the cases was too thick, so I had I had to change it out cases just so it would charge because that was that's more important than, than the case, you know. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, Warren, what do you think? Well, I was just looking at the uh, price of the uh, the cable for the watch is thirty bucks, and then the new MagSafe thing was forty, right? So that's seventy dollars. Yep. So you got seventy dollars of parts in that thing yep. that they're selling. So what are we talking? Another sixty dollars in that plastic foldable thing is what yeah. it is. Flexible so, folding thing. Yeah. So you, you can got a watch by the time you get enough cables and connectors and everything else to <clears throat> charge your existing yeah. watch. I mean, it, it looks like it's a good thing for traveling, I guess. And I like how to, the watch thing stands up straight. Yep. You know, it, it it's nice. It's nice looking. I'm sure somebody on eBay is going or not eBay, but Amazon's going to figure something out. Um, yeah, Anchor, but, a lot of those others. Yeah, but but like you and Guy, I have like probably a hundred different mounts and things to stick my stick my gear on already. I don't stick need your gear on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next story in the in the rumors department here. Um, this is Mac rumors, of course. Uh, uh, Apple rumor. Apple Care memo hints at potential hardware announcement next Tuesday. I know, guy, you have been trying to talk about this the last two weeks while we were on the Mac to the Future. Following a busy fall season, which Apple hosted three events this year. That's right, three. Know. The, the company may have one more product announcement in store for this year in 2020. It was an internal memo that came out this week, obtained by Mac Rumors by, from a reliable source, informing that the Apple service providers that Apple Care related changes uh, were planned for next Tuesday and the, and the December eighth, uh, before we record the, as we were recording this. Uh, specifically, Apple has advised technicians to prepare for new product SKUs, new updated product descriptions, and new product updated product pricing. So really what it's saying here is it was very cryptic. Of course, the the, uh, the old reliable Twitter user Love to Dream tweeted that there might be a Christmas surprise. There could be an AirTags and AirPods branded over-the-ear headphones or maybe even a new Apple TV with a gaming controller uh, that could release. So that, that could be one of those number of things. We've been, they've been talking about AirTags for the last four months and it still hasn't come out yet. So maybe this will be the, the, the shebang for next week but before Christmas. So Guy, what do you think? I think none of these products that they've mentioned are going to come out in December. And yeah. the, the basic reason is most of these products are things that you would have wanted to buy as Christmas presents or something along those lines. And if they're not even yeah. going to come out this year, then what's the point in releasing them this year? You know, if you've, if you've missed the, the big holiday extravaganza that is Christmas, Hanukkah, so on and so forth, right. then you you just wait. You wait until things die down a little bit because right now this kind of stuff gets like lost. You know, well, not so much for Apple, but for a lot of other companies when, you know, it's, well, we've got these great over-the-ear headphones or we've got this 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 small little device that can play games that like every other streaming device can play. And it's like, and people are just kind of going, <laughs> okay, yep. thanks. You know, because it's Apple, of course, everyone is like either waiting to, you know, take my money or uh, to sit there and say, well, I would never buy this because I feel that it's just not finest quality for bang to the buck. And I just wouldn't do it because I hate <laughs> Apple. <laughs> 
Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Warren, any, any thoughts on this? No, um, uh, sixteen inch uh, MacBook Pro with the M1 chip. Yeah, that's that's coming week. next year. That's that's my next MacBook Pro coming. That's coming. Year. No, that's coming next week, next Tuesday. That's that's yeah. what eighty-five it is. inch Apple TV. That's what that's what it's yeah, going to be. That, talk about that forever too. Sure. All right, and then uh, last story I had this week. It was a it was a full out Mac rumors uh, extravaganza here this week. Uh, <laughs> family family sharing for App Store subscriptions is now available. iPhone and iPad users who share apps with their families through the Apple Family Sharing feature can now share their subscription apps as well. In App Store settings under subscriptions, there is a share new subscription setting that appears to be enabled automatically. Allows you to. Uh, allows subscription apps to be shared among family members. Uh, the new option is available on the current release of iOS 14.2. And uh, Apple did announce uh, the subscription sharing options as part of the iOS 14, iPad OS 14 and Mac OS uh, Big Sur. Developers had to decide whether or not uh, they would be implementing the feature. Um, so now if anybody has uh, a, an app, uh, this will be a good example of my, my pocket. I use the app pocket casts for my podcast listening pleasure. And I, I really like that app and they have a $10 a year, uh, subscription. So now I could share that with my entire family and they can, they can use it as well. So, uh, guy, what do you think? Uh, well, even more so, and this would, this will lead into probably your next topic. It also means you can share them with your family on your Mac as well. Right. Mm-hmm. Those same mobile apps. So, hooray! Right. You know, hooray! Uh, yeah. Any thoughts, Rod? No, I was, I was confused because I'm like, they already do this, right? With and but they do it with the Apple subscriptions, uh, so right? Not third you party. Clar- you clarified it that it's third party. Um, um, yeah, I, I'm going to ask my son what he subscribes to because maybe it's something good. <laughs> yeah. Send it along to dad. Maybe, maybe, Send it along it's, to maybe dad. it's some sort of gamer. You gaming. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So all right, let's uh, move on to our topics. As always, every week we talk about beta. Beta this week, iOS, iPad OS, TV OS. 14.3 beta 3 was released uh, about a day or two ago as we record this, as well as watch OS 7.2. The, the beta has still included a lot of minor updates, and still all it's really showing is that the ProWire support, which was out in beta 2, is, of course, included for the iPhone 12 Pro and the 12 Pro Max cameras. Um, so I d- d- didn't see much else, uh, at least what I, I saw. Um, what did you see, Warren, as far as uh, any beta? There's, it's all yeah. the same, pretty much, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, same with the watch. Bug fixes. Yeah, they. Yeah. They're, they're I got it for the iPad. Uh, yeah. I don't because I don't put I don't put the iOS beta on my on my phone. Right. Um. But I I you know I got up this morning. And it was like oh you have to sign in because you know we installed this uh, developer update. It was like oh okay cool. Haven't really seen any big difference. So I guess it's mostly just bug fixes. Yeah, and then they also go through and talked about. Uh, we have some links to to some articles on on it, of course. Um, and uh, opening a custom app icon that's created in shortcuts is no longer rooted through shortcuts app, and instead app, the app opens much quicker. We talked about that before as well. So a lot of the stuff that we talked about before is, uh, there, like I said, nothing too exciting with beta. I would venture to say 14.3 would be is going to be out uh, soon, or within the next week or two, I would think. Um, but right, yeah, on third Tuesday, beta. when they announce all those new great products. That, that could be it. That could be maybe, it. So. Maybe that is a product. You'd <laughs> <laughs> be like iOS 14.3. Merry exactly. Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you. So um, another topic, which I just added here, so guys, are, this is a little new here. Um, I I was talking, I've been talking a couple, some, some couple folks that I do support for there have been asking me, and I've noticed this too, anybody who has a, a Microsoft account or Outlook.com account that they have uh, set up their Outlook.com email, uh, after iOS 14 was updated uh, early last month in November, um, Everybody was getting pop-ups saying that their password is, is needs to be yeah. reset. It needs to be reset. It needs to be reset. Uh, was it um, reset and, or you had to enter? Or, or you, had you had to enter it back. You had to enter it again. Yeah. And yeah, it wasn't so, being reset. Yeah. And I, I, I must have did it a number, a numerous times. A person that I talked to today, uh, that uh, that uh, a coworker, said, "Yeah, I've I've had to do this like five, six mm-hmm. times a day, every day for the last week." So he actually yeah. contacted Apple support, and they acknowledged that it is a bug. And yep. they're and they're working on it. 
Um, I got a link in the show notes here to a, a, a Q&A document from Microsoft, but I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention. For those of you who use Outlook as your email client, as your email uh, account, uh, that this is this is a known bug. So, uh, so, so it sounds like you've encountered it too then, Warren. I've got it too. Yeah. And, you, you know, you have to basically re-sign in and then what it does is right. take you to the... Um, to the uh, website that's how they do it now so it's right it opens the web yeah the actual microsoft website that that's yeah, the office that three, that's the microsoft 365 authentication page and exactly yep. put your put your password in again and then and away you go but then it comes back it's, again so it's not the first time something like that's happened it's happened yeah. before uh this release too it also happens in google because uh, they all do it the same google and microsoft do the same thing with the authentication page yeah all right. Any uh, anything you, you you don't use an Outlook account? I assume, uh, guy. Uh, not not on my phone. Uh, just at work. Okay. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and move on to the, the topic of this week. Uh, the the fact that you can run iOS apps on an M1 Silicon Mac. I wanted to, to discuss uh, uh, the whole process installing iOS apps uh, on your Silicon Mac, as well as ways of offloading them and. Uh, when the developer says it doesn't allow it and all that stuff. And uh, Warren, of course, you, you've had the MacBook Air M1 uh, for a bit of time, and you've been trying this. Um, what's uh, What's been your experience so far with using uh, – I, I know I installed the Mac Geek. I, I saw that the Mac Geek Gab app can be installed on, a, on an M1 uh, uh, machine. Well, what, uh, what have you tried to do? Uh, yeah, well, you know, when I first got it, I was I had no idea how to do it, how to install the apps because it's not – um, so <laughs> my son was with, with me and they're like, how do we get the, cause he wanted to get, um, yeah. he wanted to get among us. He's like, everybody's talking about it. You, you yeah. could get uh, on the new Mac. You could get among us on the PC, on the laptop. So I'm looking for it. I'm doing a search for iOS apps and I can't see it anywhere. But after, uh, after a little bit of time, basically you go into the app store, you, you type for, you type what you're looking for. And then in the list, on the top, there's a little um, selection bar uh, that says Mac Mac apps, and then the other option is iOS apps or iPad yeah. and iPhone apps. Then you click on that, and if it's available, you click it and install it, and basically it installs it as a as a regular app, um, and that app runs in various size windows. And I think sometimes it'll bring out the iPad version of the app, or sometimes it, it might bring an right. iPhone version of the app so that, and, and you can't really, you can zoom it. There's a zoom feature that does work on some of them that makes it look a little better, but um, in, for the most part, they look like a, like a box version of yeah. the iOS like- app. Like the old days when you would have an uh, you would have an iPhone app that's installed on an iPad, and then it would be the small iPhone version on the big screen, right? Right, but even more so because it's a, a huge screen. Um, the um, you know the pointer works pretty much. Uh, I didn't try. I think I tried one game and gave up because I couldn't really yeah. do it. But um, you know, it it does come in handy to have for a lot of these apps to have a physical keyboard to to um to use with it because there's a lot sometimes there's a lot of typing that you need to do and it's tough on the uh on the uh ios device um so mostly what i did for me i'm looking now was uh like home automations things things that Mm -hmm. you can't get um you know on the computer uh you know like uh, nest ring um you know things like that so it's it's kind of nice to be able just to go to that app and do it yeah, I found I have I, on 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 Google. I saw someone put a screenshot of it. Um, I'm gonna I'll, I'll put that in the show notes of where you see Mac apps and iPhone and iPad apps is uh, the, the where you choose uh, if the if the oh, those apps are available based on your search. So right, right, and and so and, and it's it's a lot like a it's a lot like when you do a search on like a like a fake Google store when you like if you click on right. the iPhone and iPad app. If you, you do a search and all the real po- the real apps come out and it's great search, and then you you click on uh you click on the iPhone and iPad apps and it's like versions similar to it's like Netflix when you try to look for a movie and it says here's something that you might like instead of this it basically comes out with like 
instead of like Twitter, it'll be like Twitter bot or tw- twi- yeah. Twitter ish from or Twitter dude <laughs> or something like that. Cause it doesn't have a phone. It doesn't actually have a, the developer decided not to put it in the store is what happens. And that that's, yeah, I was going to say that too, is, is the developer has to allow it if, if it's going to be available in the store, if you go to the Mac app store, right. Then if you just pull it, it's automatically there. He has to disallow it is what he has to do. That's, that developer has to put it in as disallowed and you can't search for it. So yeah. have you tried now? There's another method of doing it, right? There's a way to offload from uh, yeah. downloading the app from your iPhone directly. Why do you explain uh, that? that? Yeah. So the, the way they're doing it now, and I'm sure somebody else will come out with more uh, ways to do it, but uh, the version of uh, the, the iMazing program is basically yeah. uh it's also it's part of it used to be part of setup, but I think they got rid of it. No, they pulled they pulled out of it. It's it's it's, it's on its own now. But I've been a, I've yeah. been an amazing. Uh, I've had a, I have a lifetime license. I've had it forever. I so, do yeah, too. Actually, I app. bought it in one. I bought it in one of the Mac bundles, so I still right. have it. Me so, too. Yep. so if you you in iAmazing, if you um, plug in a phone and you go to manage apps, you'll see a list of all the apps that you, it actually logs into your iCloud account and it will show you all the apps you ever downloaded. Right. And next to, uh, in, in that area, there's a little cloud that you could click on it and it downloads the app. You have to kind of find it. It doesn't, it's not in any uh, typical location. You actually have to go into the library application support. Amazing. And then you'll mm-hmm. see like kind of a downloads area that you have to find it. Uh, but it downloads the IPA file, and from there you double-click the IPA file, and it basically will move it to the applications folder and hmm. open. Um, mostly, I found some that won't open, uh, but most of them will open. So I played around with that. I put the Tesla app on the phone, of course, which of course was you did. <laughs> <laughs> which is neat. So, and, and what what you could actually do is set your Mac up as a phone key uh, to get into the, the car. So you can install You're the app. and Sitting at your desk, you you open the car and then you, that's already to go. Yeah. Well, you, you have to be close to it. So you, so you, if you see me holding my MacBook Air <laughs> with the lid up, walking towards You're my car. You're going to be in real trouble when those 32-inch iMacs come yeah. out. <laughs> Why are you carrying that? I'm uh, trying to lock my box. door. <laughs> So there's some fun like things. Extension cord. <laughs> there's some fun things you could add to it. I guess is basically uh, what it is, but um, it may it's, or may not work well. It's it's a hack. So an Apple probably will kill it at one point. Is what I heard. You would think because that that I mean, but you know, back in the old days, that's what people would do is they would back up their apps. I mean, I remember doing that back way back when when you would when you would back up and you'd have all those through IP iTunes, for, yeah. Yeah, through well, iTunes, you'd have actually those. I mean, I remember having a crap load of, of, of files saved because because a lot of times then then, then the app would be gone because the developer would pull it or you wanted to have right. a backup of it. And well, not that that matters anymore anyway because the apps won't work after time anyway. But right, but Apple could push something out that says if you try to double click an IPA file on your Mac, it won't work. But, it's, yeah, it says it can do lots of things. And then the and then the other thing is the app that you're. Uh, downloading the IPA file has to be tied to your account. So right. I don't know how that works. I haven't tried to, I should try to put, put somebody else's file onto my computer yeah, to see what it actually better says. Won't, I bet it won't work. Yeah. Like, um, what is it going to say? You're not like, yeah, I don't know. But guy, so, have you dabbled in this on all? You have a Mac um, M1 Mac mini and uh, have you tried playing around yeah, with this at all? I've, I've, I mean, just to try it. And yeah, I, I did it pretty much the same way that Warren was, was talking about. And it took me a while because when I first got this machine and, and you know, the, the got done with the last update, it was like, Oh yeah, this will run iOS apps too. So I opened up the app store and it was like, again, like what Warren was saying is how the hell do I do this? Yeah. And fumbled around a bit and then finally did see the, the, the little switch between Mac apps and iPhone and iPad apps. Right. And so I, I did um, Zombie Tsunami and I did Luma Fusion and I did Among Us, which is why I was laughing when, when Warren said that. Um, I, but the controls, and I'm, this, is, this has come up over and over again, the controls for these applications are, are just not great. You know, you, if, if you don't have something in the app itself to say, okay, 
you know, how do you want to control this app and whether it's, it's on your iPhone or your iPad or your Mac, yeah. then you're going to end up fumbling a lot. You know, the first time I played or tried to play zombie tsunami, which is just a side scroller with these little zombies going across and eating people and you have to jump over stuff. And that's really the only thing you can do is jump. Yeah. So I was like, well, how do I jump? How do, how do I do that? And, and I'm looking at, and as I'm trying to figure out my, my zombies are literally dying. So uh, it, it, basically it all I had to do was, was hit the, uh, uh, the bottom of, of the track pad in order to make them jump. And it's like, well, that there's nothing here that says how yeah. to do that. The, the, so the you got to figure is, it out for yourself. The experience is not going to be great, especially when it, no, it's, but it's a lot getting of, be, it, it'll get better. Touch, touch screen type of uh, input. So, and you yeah, said you tried the Luma Fusion. Did Luma Fusion was that installable on on a Mac? Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, but um, you had to off, but you had to offload it with an IPA file. Uh, no, it, it's it's right here in my applications folder. Hmm. Okay, is Luma it? Fusion. I'm opening it up right now. Luma Fusion, and there it is. Now I do get a oh. sign in with your Apple ID every time I try to open this which is oh, somewhat right. disconcerting. Okay. But yeah, it stores, it stores the, um, I didn't do it. Well, I'm just going to cancel. It stores the applications as far as I know, right there in your application folder. So it's right. not like it's, you have to do something special once you've downloaded the app in order to use it. It's going to be there in your applications folder. Well, One thing I would probably like to see is, maybe just make a, a, a folder in the applications folder that says iOS and, and iPad apps, at least for now in the very beginning. So yeah, you, yeah. you, you know, people that aren't aware of, of how it works will know that they're not running necessarily a Mac app, that they're running a, a mobile version of something else that they want to do. But, well, that's good to see someone like LumaFusion. LumaFusion is a huge, huge app on the iPad for doing uh, video yeah. editing. And uh, when I've got that's it. Good. That's I've good. Got yeah, it on my yeah iPad. I, I own it on my iPad. Yeah, I didn't, didn't mm -hmm. realize that you could actually that that they're actually listed in the uh, in the store uh, on the Mac as well for the M1. So uh, yep. that, that that that's great to hear. And have you had tried? Is, is, does it? Have you tried doing any editing with it uh, on the on the Mac? No. It well like. It was, it was just like a couple of days ago that I was, I started to look at that. And then when I saw what was in the show notes for tonight, it was like, Oh yeah, I should really try this before we start to talk about it. Sorry. And unfortunately, every single time I've, I've tried to open Luma fusion, it's asking me for my Apple ID. Yeah. And once I get that in and, and then it's like, okay, I start to mess around with the controls a little bit. And then we started the show. So I haven't really had a no, chance to no play worries. with it too much. Right, so no, it's your it's fault. It's your fault, Dave. No, well, that's how that works. It's yeah. okay. I just, I, this was, this is first experiences. I mean, we've only, the M yeah. M1 Mac has only been out for a few weeks and, and, and haven't seen a lot of chatter about this. So I thought this would be a great topic to, to people, complain, share with people. people complain a little bit to say it's not the, you know, the best experience, but as to be then expected, they, then it's they new. They stop complaining when I realize it, it was something that wasn't there before and something that, yeah. they, you know, just oh, added. Exactly. They could have, they could have easily not done that, you know, and nobody would have said anything. Yeah. And for it. all the people that complain about how the Mac is not a gaming machine. Well, yeah. this opens up a, a huge library of granted relatively simple games, but there's some, there's some real great nuggets in there as well. Yeah. So tiny you know, windows, it, are, that's a problem. Well, but that's going to change, you know, as developers make these apps and, and if, and if they're smart, this is what they'll do. They'll, they'll make the app so that it's more Mac like when you're playing it on a Mac versus when you're playing it on an iPad or an iPhone. So once that starts to happen, I mean, we're going to see, we're going to see a lot of applications for the Mac that we, we never thought that we would be able to, to use. LumaFusion is, is another great example of that. Now I don't think I would download like the the mobile version of Microsoft Office because if you've got an Office 365 subscription already, you've got right. the full versions there. Yeah, there's no, so why would you do pointless. that? Yeah. So, but this this kind of is I I think this kind of gets back to uh, kind of a, a a pet topic of of mine where the computer that's in your pocket eventually is going to be the computer on your desk where you just you plug it in and it's 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 your desktop on right. a big monitor and you're using a regular keyboard and a mouse or a trackpad or 
you know, and it's, it's just going to work. And the, the crazy thing is Samsung already does it right. with Dex. And I had a device and I'm not going to, I'm, I'm resisting oh, the temptation it. to go yes. over and get it. I'm going to leave it alone. No, I had a device cool. a couple of years ago that did this and it was brilliant. I was, I was stunned at how well it worked in this little hockey puck shaped device. But Apple's not doing it. Apple's not doing anything like that. What they're doing oh, you know they things. are, just not out in the open. It, it's in their labs. You, you can bet it's yeah. in their labs. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but but instead of doing that, they're doing this. They're saying instead you could open up the iOS apps on your mm -hmm. computer and use a desktop environment too. Well, they're 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 blurring the lines between what a computer is and and their advertisement. Even though I I hate the commercial itself with little <laughs> girls sitting there saying what's a computer. Yeah. You know, they're, they're blurring the line between between what you do on mobile and what you do on your desktop. And eventually it's not going to make any difference. It's all going to be the same. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought that was a good, good, good discussion. Uh, I do have a link in the show notes from uh, the Verge article that uh, Warren, I think some things that Warren mentioned about uh, you not officially should be doing the IPA file and, and, and maybe block down the road. But uh, you could you could take a look at that as well. Uh, but uh Good, good discussion on this, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see where this goes with with uh, with M one yeah, and iOS apps, you know, for for sure. So, um, next uh, topic I want to talk about here is uh, Apple did announce uh, t uh, the top downloaded iOS games for twenty twenty. Of course, none of us are uh, big gamers, at least I'm not. But then, of course, you just mentioned Among Us is one of the top free games of twenty twenty. I haven't even yeah. known this game before. I guess I need to check it out now. Uh, and uh, that was one of the top free games of 2020, um, along with Call of Duty uh, Mobile and their Roblox, Subway Surfers. Fortnite game. Blows. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, yeah. Uh, do I see Fortnite Mr. Mention? No. <laughs> no, you do not. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, and then they said Minecraft was the top paid game of the year, uh, followed by Plague Again. Inc. Heads Up. Oh, yeah. Everybody loves Heads Up with putting their, their phone up to their forehead and you're, you're describing something. Uh, and... Uh, uh, that would be really hard to do on the uh, Mac uh, version. Of that the, would be, yeah. Yes, just to say. <laughs> and of course, Zoom is the top free app. But, but, yeah. Uh, of course, uh, Zoom is uh, is one of the top apps. What a surprise! Uh, we're using Zoom right now. I mean, everybody's using it. And of course, TikTok, Disney Plus, YouTube, Instagram. Oh, those are all going to be uh, be that. I, I link a show notes here to uh, Mac a Mac Rumors article. And uh, there is a link actually into the app store link and shows the total free charts and shows all these apps that, that are used. And many of them I, I've been using as well. Uh, and you know, what'd you think guys, as far as uh, any of these apps you uh, utilize, I assume you use a lot of these. Um, I honestly, I, I, you know, I'm looking at this and it was kind of, cause we, we talked around this last night as well. Yeah. Other than some of the services app, Disney plus YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, so on and so forth. I'm not using any of the the game apps that they have listed here. Right. Uh, I, you know, I'm not using Hot Schedules or Facetune or or I've never even heard of some of these before. Auto Sleep Sleep Tracker. Yeah. I I'm asleep. Leave me alone. You know. <laughs> get off <laughs> my right. lawn. Get off um, my lawn. Get off my lawn. So, you know, I, I it's it's most of these I I don't use except for some of the services and and they're they're these are all just fine apps and it doesn't surprise me that they're, they're on a, a a top ten etc list. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, Warren, did you uh have you, any any these apps that you've been utilizing at all? Yeah, not much. But remember when they pulled the play gap from uh, China? Do you remember that? Oh yeah! Well, I have, actually, you know what? I have Plague played is number four on there, and they, uh, and they pulled it Plague because of, yeah, they pulled it because of the pandemic, which started there. So everybody was downloading it. It was like the hottest thing. That's probably why it's on the list. But when the uh, the the virus hit, everybody was downloading that game again. And I've played that game. It's actually pretty fun. You, you, you yeah. try to you try to infect Kill everybody. Everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Everyone must die. Die. Um, then, uh, next topic I want to talk about is, uh, actually I discovered this, uh, the, uh, Apple has really done a great job revamping their accessibility, uh, site, the, the website that's apple.com slash accessibility, it, it kind of, uh, touting all the built-in features that work the way you do, make them yours, make them something wonderful. 
Um, so, you know, things like uh, the reading the fine print, the magnifier. I use that magnifier all the time. I don't know about you guys. I, I, I find that all the to time. Be extremely helpful. I mean, of course, yeah, a lot of us are, aren't real good with our eyesight, so it really helps immensely. I mean, I, I just did it today. I was, uh, uh, there was a webcam that was broken in uh, one of the tablets I was working on today, and I wanted to get real close to see, and, oh, yeah, look, the lens came off. <laughs> so being able to see something really close is, uh, is uh, something uh, that's really good. Um, and then large text zoom. I'm sure you've used that. The guy you think you've used a lot of these so, so far that I've mentioned sure. uh, uh, oh, yeah. as far as that. And, and, and it, it's not a big surprise. I think, I think Apple yeah, has kind of really have led the way when it comes to accessibility and trying to make their products to be used, not just by, right. you know, the, the, I'm not even sure what the term is these days, the, the ably cited or, or, whatever, you know, the, the terminology is. So, you know, they, they, they want, they want everyone to have the best possible experience in yes. using their products. And they understand that not everyone is going to have perfect eyesight or, or eyesight at all. Not everyone is, is, is going to have perfect hearing and, and all the rest of that. So they do what they can to make it as easy as possible for everyone to use their products. And absolutely the fact that they've kind of led the way in that doesn't surprise me. You know, that's, that's, that go, that goes all the way back to the very early days of the company. Oh, for sure. But you just go through this list. There's just so many great things. And, and, and then I'm, it's not necessarily that I'm, that I need them, but they, they make, make your life easier when it comes to this, uh, yeah. like switch, switch control, being able to switch the way you move. It shows how you can tap and scroll down and share the back tap. That was the big, that, that's been talked about a bunch of times. Uh, I, I, I like that feature and you just got to be careful what you set the back tap for, because, uh, I had the screenshots set and I, I inadvertently back tap and sure enough, I got lots of screenshots stayed in my, in my photos library. So, uh, but uh, assistive touch, turning a pinch into a swipe, that 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 seems to work as well. But yeah, I got a link to the to, in the show notes to the Apple's site here, and just just talks about a lot of this uh, great stuff and uh, the Safari Reader, be captive uh, uh, by content, uh, not clutter, turning a, uh, assigned reading into easy listening. You can have spoken content, so you can, you actually can have things re- read to you, not even have to have an app to, yeah. to read things to you. So. Um, and voiceover voices too and with different voices and so there's just a, a tremendous amount of uh, uh of of ways of accessibility and to help you get more out of your app, apple uh dev- ios device for that matter so uh warren do you have anything else that you wanted to add to this uh, no i mean i well yeah i i was a little I, I had some kind of sinus infection last week and uh between that and a condition i have I had an issue where my hands were sh- was shaking and mm-hmm. I couldn't stop them from shaking. Um, it's gone away, thankfully, but I was in Good. there. I was in the accessibility uh, area and I went under touch and found a couple of things that made it easier for me to, to use a phone during that time. So that, that was good. But on the funny side, I was trying to troubleshoot a uh, mm-hmm. iPad today uh, at work that had the uh, voiceover turned on by accident. And if with the and it, we were trying to, you can't even unlock the thing with the with the, the voiceover. It's like, it's like, it says everything. So you, if you push a number, it doesn't say it. it it's don't use voiceover. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. It yeah. won't let you unlock an iPad. It, it was actually funny. All right, had, uh, you had to be there. No, no, that was that was, that was pretty <laughs> that, that was pretty funny. Um, all right, let's uh, let's uh, throw on a couple tips here. Um, one tip I wanted to talk about here is, uh, you know, whenever you open up uh, any photos and you want to be able to uh, remove the location data, because there will be times you may want to send a photo to somebody and you don't want to share where it was taken, uh, so it keeps it private. Um, and the way you can do that is if you go into photos and you actually, you know, go ahead and select the photo that you want to share with somebody, before you uh, actually share it, there is at the very top of the of the bar, it says, uh, it gives you options. You tap that options uh, link and you can go in there and change the, the, the location to, to no location at all. Um, so if you want to, um, if you want to be able to, uh, to change it, you just tap it and then switch it out to no location. And sure enough, you are going to be able to, uh, remove that, send it to somebody, and then they will not know where that photo was taken. A lot of times, uh, a good example is like taking a picture of like, let's say a keyboard or something you wanted to take a picture of. I think that doesn't necessarily have to be in something important to have 
um, as far as uh, uh, sharing where that, that picture was actually taken. Um, and a lot of times you take pictures of people, you, you, you probably want to be able to uh, uh, to do that. So um, have you guys used that before? No, I haven't. Not like that. Yeah, yeah I think it's a, it's a, it's a neat uh, way to, uh, to add that, uh, 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 way of, uh, protecting it if you don't want that information to be out there. So, all right, let's, uh, move on. Uh, we've got our app picks of the week and guy, we still need a pick from you cause you picked a Mac OS app. I don't know if you've got something. Yeah. I, I don't know what I, what was I thinking? Um, <laughs> I actually, I f- forgot that zoom <laughs> I'm having a senior moment. I forgot that, uh, zoom has a chat feature. So I put it over there in Facebook. Oh, you did. I did. Oh it's, yeah. I was uh, wondering robot. why my Facebook dinged. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> robot thought, wants kitty. By I thought Raptosoft. that was code for something. <laughs> no, no, no. I have been playing. I have been playing this stupid game. Robot wants for kitty. For like almost 10 years. It came out in 2011. Robot and it's, kitty. it's basically yes. it, like wants a combination kitty. of robots, uh, Mario and kitties. So it like hits all the, the, top hot buttons for me it's it's you keep you bounce and you jump and you you get killed in various ways or your your robot avatar does and it's it's just one of those games that you can pick up for five or ten minutes and say oh okay my food is ready so i can put this away now you know so (laughs) it's a fun little distraction game Hmm. looks looks interesting we'll have a link in the show notes of course of this uh app here and uh yeah, it looks like that's something that could be addicting. It does have, it looks like it has uh, in-app purchases, so you probably can buy. Um, yeah, well, because th- there's there's a huge community that's, that's actually behind this game yeah, now. It's not bad. You can Four play bucks like for no free. Ads. Yeah, well, not only that, but you you can play for free all of the, the, the built-in mazes and stuff. Uh, but to get the most out of the game, there's a there's an in-app purchase that you can buy that will open it up for all of the mazes and stuff that developers over the last almost 10 years have made. And so it's a never ending plethora of new types of ways to try to get the kitty. So it's fun. Cool. And then Warren, your pick this week. So my pick was um, it's a, it's called a secret photo vault Uh, keepsake uh, is what it is. And basically it is, uh, a application where you could store photos in mm-hmm. uh, that you need to either unlock with a pin or your face to get into. Um, so the reason why I got this and I got this a while ago is um, at one point I got a, uh, one of those minimalist wall- wallets. It, it holds like a couple of credit cards, but not a lot. Um, and pretty much has a money belt on it. I, I got rid of it. I hated it, but at the time I had it mm-hmm. and um I realized, you know, half half the things in my wallet wouldn't fit in there. So I'm like, what am I going to do? Oh, so I decided for the things I could, uh, like, you know, cards and things like that, I was going to take pictures of, of them and put them on my phone. So I, I, I had them, but mm-hmm. I didn't really want to put that on my photo album. I didn't want to put it in my photo library. So I looked around and uh, basically what this says is you can take pictures. It doesn't end up anywhere else. Uh, and it's password protected. And it's uh, backed up um, too uh, securely, um, and it lets you go in and uh, you know I have like my social security numbers and my son's and my driver's license, you know things that you don't want to to share out. And it's free um, unless you want to get it with a couple more features. You could, it's actually expensive as like a monthly yeah. fee if you want to do twenty four dollars a month a year yearly premium. Yeah. But you don't need it. I'm telling you, you don't need to, to for for just a free version. If you just want to store securely, um, you know, uh, things in there, it it does it does a good job. Hmm. And would this be something you you couldn't use this uh, a lot of the stuff that this does in uh, one password? Does one password store like actual photos? I don't think it's stores store is what they you, they have. Their one password has notes. No, so yes. no, these are yeah. these are photos. It's specifically so it's just photos. Okay, it's just photos. You're storing photos, and it's it's not password protected. It's uh, it's it's you know iPhone protected either by Touch ID, Face ID, or PIN. Okay, 
All right. And then uh, my pick this week is called an app called Light Leap. It was formerly called Quick Shot. Um, you can now take the photos you want and actually are meant to take. Uh, it, it is a photo editor that actually proves you no longer have to be a professional photographer to take amazing photos. Uh, really what this does is you actually get, if you get, let's say you have a photo, there's, there might be, uh, someone in the background that you want to take out. You could just use your finger, scroll over that, that, that part of the photo and, and it magically just removes that out of the photo. Um, and you could change backgrounds. You can add, uh, you, know, you can add like from going from, uh, uh, cloudy skies to to a sun sunny sky uh it's a it's pretty slick and and easy to do you don't have to uh you don't have to do it it has a healing tool it's got filters effects um so that was pretty cool um i i just discovered this uh, uh not too long ago here so um and they do have in-app purchases it is free to try and it looks like they go all the way up to really expensive um, the stuff, and it breaks it down to a lot of the uh, different uh, settings that it can do. Um, but uh, check that out. I think it was uh, it was a pretty cool uh, cool app to uh, be able to do that. It works both on the iPad and the iPhone. So uh, get nice big full screens. It does check look it really out. cool. Yeah, Light Leap. That's what it's called. So, And it looks like we have come to a close of Good this time. week. Unless you guys have anything else you want to bring up. Nope, I'm good. All right, great. And let's go ahead and wrap things up here. Uh, that is a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at InTouchWithIOS, or you can subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts and many others. But better yet, go to our website at InTouchWithIOS.com, where all the links, all the ways to listen to us are there. I am Dave Ginsburg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. Mr. Guy Searle, thank you for being here yes. this week. And uh, thank tell you. everybody for inviting me. how we can find you. You're, you're, you are welcome. How we can find you. Tell everybody how we can find you. Oh, so many ways. How much time do we have? Uh, email is guy at mymac.com. I am Mac Paradivert Shark over there on the Twitters. Uh, I have two other, three other podcasts that I do. Uh, the mymac.com podcast is the longest one I've been doing for a very long time with Mr. Gazmaz. The Mac to the Future Go live cast that I do with these two these two guys right here, Warren and Dave. And uh, something really crazy and stupid called Guy's Daily Drive, where I record myself in the car, just whatever happens to pop into my head. But I'm very careful because, as you know, driving That's is job one. Dangerous. Job one. Um... What else? I guess that's about it. Oh, ah. uh, Vert Shark is the ah. website. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> almost forgot. Vert yeah, Shark not? is the website, and um, uh, Vert Shark is the there playlist over there on on YouTube. If you would like to check out the vast and there's, actually there's quite a few videos in there now, vast <laughs> library of of things that I have put up there. I think we're up to one sixty six in Mac to the Future. And I think I've done close to well over a hundred guys daily drives. There's 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 a lot of stuff out there, and if you'd like to help support all the crazy stuff that I do, especially for buying microphones and and computer monitors that I probably don't really need, uh, right. Patreon.com forward slash Mac Parrot Coffee K O dash F I forward slash Mac Parrot. And if you'd like to pay a pal, go to PayPal.me forward slash Mac Parrot. There we go. <laughs> and now warren what's been going on at mac to the future anything exciting oh everything's exciting over there um uh, nothing somebody's um somebody's trying to figure out how to organize their hard drives um for uh, being out she, they take she's a photo editor and she takes a lot oh, of i saw that and, post yeah um, very, and, she's getting a little upset that people are asking her to spend money <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you could go both ways on them, and I could understand. Some people like you know are set in their ways, and they want to do it the way they do it. And, I, and I've dealt with a lot of people like that too. And you know, to change the whole system around is is a is a thing. Um, so uh, you know, there's there, those there's, are the hardest people th- whose desktops to look at. Yeah. Yes. So I mean, <laughs> we could go into the whole story of it, but basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah, basically, it's um, it's uh, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to tell her that uh, maybe a, a, like a raid or a, a NAS is the way to go, but you know, it, it is money, and uh, you know, it is. money people don't want to spend, and I, I get a, it. 
get people to come exactly. join jo- join our group uh mac the future is uh, is an awesome place to be on facebook um it it's, is. it's a f- free membership come join a uh, three thousand plus uh, members which is awesome that's what attracted me to be part of yep. it and met met, uh, met you more and of course in there in that group and now sure it, glad it's I not completely filled with snark but it's close there's a little snark from you but it's once in a while yeah, a little, a little bit, it's 20 yeah. percent snark free you know, <laughs> we, we keep snark out anyway thanks Dry. thank you guys for being here for and for uh, uh, giving us your insights this week everybody we appreciate you listening thanks for listening and we will talk again soon <laughs>